Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode nine. No, ten we're up to. Wow, it's gone quick, uh, our series here. Episode ten of Secret Pantry Business. Today we're in WA, a little bit of a time difference to myself down in Tasmania here. Uh, we've got Kurt Sampson from uh, Propeller. Kurt, thanks for having us. Uh, my pleasure. My um, pleasure. And um, here's to a knockoff drink to you. <laughs> Thank you. Just yes, lunchtime. have a nice uh, lunchtime drink for you over there. And uh, yes. what an amazing view you've given us in this kitchen here. It must be an amazing day in uh, WA. Here it's raining, if only I could show you from my window. <laughs> um, look, it's, it's perfect. It's uh, blue sky. Oh, there's a, a few white clouds in the distance, <laughs> but um, that's the beauty of living in Perth. Uh, the unfortunate thing is we don't have seasons, and that's something else that I miss coming from New Zealand so yes that is something we definitely have here in Tasmania in one yes. day but anyway what are we cooking today it's a beautiful landscape doesn't it yes absolutely absolutely what do you have for us what are we sh what are we cooking um I've got a, a, a gorgeous piece of uh hue and salmon here that I picked up from the boys down at uh, Perth Seafood so oh. Michael and Rod and Chris down there um and they were kind enough to uh, fillet it for me because, not because I'm afraid to fill it, but uh, just because they do an awesome job. Uh, they do all, all their stuff down there is uh, always dry filleted. And um, as you can see, this piece of salmon was probably swimming yesterday. Would that be right? Uh, yeah, that? most likely. And they would have picked it up this morning. So uh, that's that's how efficient Q&A is. And with, why uh, do you look for um, dry filleting? Um, well, just just so you keep all its flavour in, so it's not all wet and soggy, and um, it just feels. To be honest, it just feels not. It just feels <laughs> better. I mean, and, and then you don't get ripped off with water in the bag when they bag it up. Very true. Very true. Yeah, but um, I don't know. I've, I've used many seafood places, and, and they've always been the high end wherever I was, Melbourne, London. But uh, these boys, I don't, they just know their fish. And it's a pleasure to work with uh, with a company like the, those boys at Perth Seafood. And probably the same for you guys too. Because, yeah, um, it's Yeah, they just do everything. Everything they touch, they do it justice. So. Such kind words. I'm sure they will love um, to hear that. And we've tagged them as well in this post if anyone in Perth wants to find out where they are um, to get their own hue and salmon from them. All right, so yeah. what are we doing with the salmon today? So we're going to do a um, – we're going to slow cook the salmon itself and I'm going to do it in a piece, so just to show you how easy it is to do at home for your family and um, and uh, a nice slow way of, of um, cooking it and an easy – I find an easy way, just a couple of – as we go, go on, I'll show you a couple of little tips to um, look out for. Um, and it keeps it lovely and moist and there's no loss in moisture, et cetera, et cetera. Um, everyone sort of, you know, they, they automatically think of crispy skin salmon, but I find eating it this way, it's just uh, magical. Yeah, beautiful. And what are we putting with it? So, uh, we're going to do um, a Persian uh, relish called subsi. Uh, the whole thing would be called Subsi Maha, which just means um, the relish in the fish. And then I'll, I'm just going to dolly it up a little bit with some tahini yogurt. And then I'm going to do some fried egg noodle rice. Delicious. Delicious. Um, and then at, at home you can add a, a, another element, uh, so just some steamed broccolini or some steamed beans because you've got enough flavour all happening with the rice and the salmon and the uh, relish. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. All right, so, show us how to get started. So gonna, okay, I, um, I actually got this. So what I'm going to do here is, is um, very early on in my career, um, I worked with some Japanese boys, and uh, the way that they handle their fish is just, it's uh, it's just art. I know that sounds wacky, but it is. Nice. They, um, they they never pick it up. You see a lot of 
um, people just pick it up and, and they're quite rough and they make tears, but they, they are forever just, um, you know, always holding it as if it's like a, a newborn baby, I guess. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this up and it's only just for presentation purposes. If you've got eight people coming around or, I mean, these sides are, the salmon at the moment, correct me if I'm wrong, would probably be about four and a half, five kilo. Yeah, around that, around that, yeah. And, and it does vary throughout the season, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, you know, the more people, then just, just the, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. And so you can actually do apply this cooking method to a whole fish. So, uh, here we go. So, this one, I'm going to pretend I'm feeding, you know, six to eight people. Um, I try not to, to destroy the shape of it. I, I quite enjoy that shape. Especially the way how they've taken the head off here, which would sit here. They've gone in and utilised it, you know, all the side. But we're just going to trim this up. Okay. And we'll, we'll reserve that because I'll show you what you can do with that a bit later on if we have time and I'm not boring you. Um, I just took <laughs> yeah, a little bit of this belly off. And that's just for my own pleasure because this. This, to me, is, is the best part. It's lovely and fatty. Oh, not fatty, it's oily, I should say. Um, fat seems to be a bad word when you talk about uh, flesh like this. Um, then this board's a little bit small. <laughs> then we'll just trim this up just so I can get it on my tray. Yeah. Um, we don't have to worry about the skin at this stage because we're going to take that skin off and we're going to take the bloodline off. But I, I don't, it must be OCD, but <laughs> I always trim the up for some strange reason. Um, just because I, I just get a kick out of uh, something looking so neat and pristine. That's fantastic. Uh, and then it's as simple as this. So I've got a, a silver salver, which is just a silver tray that... Um, uh, we'll get a little bit of oil down on here. So I'm just popping a little bit of olive oil down here um, on the tray first. I'd probably scream it so I don't use olive oil in the kitchen because it's just a waste. But that's just to stick the paper down. Ah, great. There and then it won't all curl up and blow away. Then I'll grab my salmon. I'll place this on here. Uh, before I've started, I've actually turned my oven on. So it's on as low as I can get this oven, yeah? Right. Uh, it should be about, I'd say it's probably sitting about 60 degrees. Oh, you've seen my trick. I've got my pre-prepared <laughs> salmon already. <laughs> we didn't see it. We didn't <laughs> see it. It's okay. Oh, okay. So <laughs> and then we just give this a really generous um, dousing in oil. So this is a method that I picked up um, in Melbourne from Regina Hepner, who worked at Jacques Raymond. And they used to actually, and I could be wrong, but for some reason, or I used to do it in the end, but for some reason I used to um, cook it in the hot box because it was such a low temperature. But you would need 45 degrees to set protein, and this is what we're doing here. Great. Um, and then we're just going to get a little bit of salt and pepper. So the, the secret to... Uh, Good food, I find, is, is a generous type of seasoning. There we go. And then um, that's about as good as it gets, and then we throw this into, oh, we place this into the oven. <laughs> you can but throw it, it's fine. Up. Give it a bit of a energy boost. <laughs> yeah. So how long are we um, how long are we planning to put the salmon in the oven for? Oh, uh, about forty to fifty minutes. Okay. Uh, again, it just depends on the size. But the, I did do one side a bit earlier because I don't want to bore people and keep them um, online for too long. Um, I've done one earlier and it took fifty-five minutes. Yeah. Okay. 
happens. It's not that long, even at a low heat. No, no, it's not that long at all. Um, I'm just going to go and my other um, ingredients to go for the next stage. Okay. Tidy kitchen is an important thing. Oh, it's, um, yeah, not, it's great in a commercial kitchen. <laughs> you, can, you can just throw all your stuff at your kitchen hand. I do have my <laughs> kitchen hand. She's not very good at uh, washing the dishes, so she looks and clean, but that's about as far as we get. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, kitchen hand. Yeah, I know. I'm thinking of getting rid of it. <laughs> Probably not, wasn't too as cute. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm just grabbing, setting up my uh, sabzi and my rice at the same time. Um, before we start with the, I'll just go through the rice ingredients. Sure. Um. I use a basmati rice and look for the yellower the better, yeah? And then I soak it for two, uh, for one to two hours, and that'll cause it to swell and get nice and long in the grain. So I've got some soaking here. I say on the recipe, um, you just look for the um, basmati stella, okay. and it's been soaking for an hour and a half, which I've strained. Um, if you don't get a, a good yellow basmati, if you soak it, it'll um, all break up and oh, right. um, go like broken rice or go really soggy and, and but this one won't. Um, and then we're going to put some fried egg noodles through it. So these are just the egg noodles that are just normally just for soups or for this purpose. And what it does is it, it, it makes them really um, nutty in flavour. Right. And that's, that's how we get um, a cheaper version of a rice without using expensive nuts with a nice nutty flavour. Yeah. So, um, my pan's just heating up here. I'm going to throw in a good amount of uh, olive oil, which I've already prepared in a, in a little jug here. Beautiful little jug there. Yeah. Thank you. Then uh, we're going to pack some onions and the uh, egg noodles. Um, it should be hot enough now. Uh, we just drop the onions in and give them a, a fry. And uh, when, when they're um, sort of halfway, then we're going to throw in the uh, noodles and, and get them quite dark. Now, if you're not confident in cooking, I'm not sure I'll that on. If you're not confident in cooking rice through a pot and you want to use your rice steamer, by all means, just put these in a pan and toast them off in some oil until they're um, dark. And they can be about as dark as this this dog here, yeah, in colour, um, to achieve that nutty flavour. So, wow. This is how quick uh, this is. I'm just going to grab another pot and, and we'll get the um, subsy going at the same time. Um, so you were saying the weather's uh, rainy over there? Yeah, the day is very rainy. drizzly. It started off nice the day. Uh, as it does in Tasmania, yeah. but yes, lunchtime came and the and the rain came. Although I can see a glimpse of sun coming through the, the clouds at the moment, so you never know. Might be able to get out for a dog walk this afternoon without getting wet. But nice, <laughs> nice. So that's uh, we're just going to let this get some nice colour now. Unfortunately, it's not in the commercial kitchen, so we don't have the same sort of heat. Um, as you do at home. And is there a particular pot you're looking for for this one? Do we need a heavy base to be able to get that heat? Uh, yeah, do a heavy base and, and have it wide enough because if, if your pot's too narrow, you're going to overcook your rice at the bottom because you've got to add your, your liquid. Right. Um, so 
So all I do is I just add uh, water, but it's quite heavily salted, eh? Um, and this is the way that a, a Turkish guy that I worked with years ago taught me. He was actually a truck driver, but um, he fell into cafes in uh, New Zealand, and we worked together. And some of his recipes I still use today, just because they're so true, I find. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, this is going to take a little bit longer than I wanted to, but anyway, um, right. this, this pots on to do the subsidy, and that's uh, another quite quick one where we fry off some onions and garlic, and then uh, the coriander, keep it quite green, and then throw in um, uh, some dried fenugreek, which is a, a lovely flavour. Well, while we um, wa let that cook. Tell us about what you're doing at Propeller at the moment. How how are things during COVID? Uh, um, yeah, we, we, we're doing just take away five days a week, um, and, and it's been quite oh, it's been successful. It's good and it's good fun. It's a completely different kettle of fish to running a, a dining room. Um, I've never ordered so many takeaway containers in my life. But, um, yeah, we're, we're muddling our way through it. It's a, it's a surreal time, I find. Yeah. It's, we, we, uh, the, the McGowan government announced, yes, what's today? Tuesday. So on Sunday morning that um, on the 18th, we're allowed to go to 20 people in the dining room at any one time, which, which um, we will take advantage of. But unfortunately, it's... It's going to be quite a costly exercise for the business, so we'll, yeah. we'll have to. We really need to think about. We don't hate getting things wrong. Like when we did takeaway, we reduced our prices deliberately because it's takeaway, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, and just to help everyone out. So we try and do stuff because Propellers sits in um, North Fremantle, and it's quite a cool little hub. So we do try and, and be a, of service to our uh, or our local community. Yeah, um, absolutely. So hopefully uh, it'll filter down. I mean, and that's, and that's so true. Um, it's, it's been a time that's really hurt our hospitality industry and we've all said it from the start that it's going to be hard for you guys to bounce back. And although it's starting to hear that the, there's stages and plans for you guys to open it, it's still only small steps for you and you're still going to only have to be able to adapt as much as you can. So we'll still have to support you as much as we can. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, I'm not, I'm not, I'll be honest, I'm not looking forward to uh, re the reopening. Yeah. I'll be glad with, only because it's going to be done in stages. Yeah. And it's just not the same. You can't get the ambience in the dining room, you know. Yeah. But I look at, um, I think the general, the, the public it, itself has is, is been fantastic the way that they've, um, I'll put this on back front, I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, the way that they're, they're so understanding, you know, so you might fall behind when they're coming in to do their takeaways, um, you know, but they just stand there patiently and wait and no one gets upset. So that's amazing. It's, that, that, it's a good thing. Yeah. I, I do feel sorry for your smaller businesses. Uh, we've got this pan on getting nice, lovely and hot. And goes um, our chopped onions. This is for the sub seeds. So this is our green relish. Um, and this came from uh, Meishan's mother. Who, Meishan's a, a Persian... Woman that works uh, on the floor for us. She's actually in the kitchen with me at the moment for the, um, the takeaway to help us. Um, and she often brings in the odd, you know, her favourite recipe for mum. So it's brilliant. It's funny, like, there's, there's a couple of Persian women that work at uh, Propeller. Uh, Master's another one. So um, we often compare little food stories. <laughs> You learn from each other in the kitchen. Yeah. So this this is starting to get some colour, which is good. We really need the noodles to, yeah. to go more this sort of colour. Yeah, I can see that. So we're not too far. But I've also got to fry the rice, so I might want to 
might be a little smaller. But anyway, um, we'll move along. I've got uh, these sweating down. It could sweat just a little bit more, and then I'll throw in this garlic. It's quite a good amount of garlic. There's five cloves there. And then I'll pre chop the coriander. So this was two bunches. I think I um, use the stalk and all. So what I do is I, is I patiently um, bunch up the coriander, and then I actually hold it really tight, and then just chop away. So. I've right. got this little part to, just to demonstrate to use the whole lot. So my camera follows me over here. Um, and then, so just nice and fine. But it's got um, awesome flavour right through, right through to the root. But in the Middle East, we don't use the root very often. They do in Thailand and stuff. Don't waste there it. Make, it has flavour. So, yeah. Yeah. Especially in this, because we, we are going to cook it. Uh, oh, here we go. So my noodles are coming along nicely now. Oh. Yeah, a bit more colour there. I can see that. Yeah. And all over the floor. <laughs> That's where the kitchen hand comes into play. Okay. So at this stage now, I'm just going to add this rice that we've soaked. Yeah? Perfect. So you can hear it passing because it's still a bit of moisture in there. And I let this have a, um, a good fry as well. You need this water boiling. I don't know what's happening here. Yeah. Um, to get it really hot. And uh, we'll, we'll put that water in and just, I said, just, I do say on the recipe, just to be careful at this stage, because you've got this really hot pan, you've got boiling water, you throw it in, you get steam everywhere. It's good for the old facial. <laughs> um, you just don't want to burn yourself. Uh, this one just need a little bit more oil. Just to moisten it a bit. So it's all coming together slowly. Sorry, guys. This will be a little bit faster, but anyway. We can hear that that uh, browning and the sticking to the pot, making yeah. it nice and crunchy. So that's all part of it. It's good in that sort of thing. Uh, performing. We'll have a look at this uh, salmon. So the salmon will just be getting warm now. It's, only, it's not even blood temperature, so it's still very raw. And you can see how it wobbles around when you poke it. Yeah. Um, just if you can store that in your memory, and when I talk about the next stage, uh, you'll see what I mean. They're yeah, great. Okay, so this this is uh, probably could come down a fraction more, but um, we're going to add this now anyway. So this is our chopped coriander. So we add this. And we give this a little cook, but we don't want to. I probably should have had a bigger pan. <laughs> Never mind. That's fine. This is what home cooking looks like, isn't it? <laughs> Trying to use yeah. what you have. Well, I do. I, I'm fortunate enough to have. Um, out, I have a whole room full of stuff. Um, yeah, don't ask me why. But. Uh, I guess if you've been doing it for about 30 years, you end up collecting, and you go through phases. So, you know, I went through a phase where we used um, coppers, and now um, we've gone on to scan pan. I do, um, I do enjoy the old scan pan. Well, that's a good segue um, into uh, what would you say is your favourite utensil? Oh, God. A pair of tongs, I'd say. I don't, I'm not too sure. <laughs> I, um, my favourite utensil. Oh, something you couldn't live without. Oh yeah, yeah, tongs. Tongs. I, I, um, 
people, yeah, I'm so old fashioned. I mean, the people use tweezers these days, and um, when we were in, or when I did a stint in London, people would uh, mock you for using tongs for turning fists. But uh, if you're gentle enough, you can achieve everything with your pair of tongs. You can even flip an egg if you if you've got the right um, pressure on your hands and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Don't ask me. To uh, so this is our coriander cooking down nicely here. Our rice is almost ready. We're just waiting on this water to come to the boil, but you know what they say about a closely watched pot. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's so never, this, never boils. This uh, dish is definitely not for the faint-hearted, for ones that are on the fence with coriander then. It's, it's probably got a pretty good coriander punch to it, I'm guessing. Uh, so that, I'm just that, sorry. The, the dish, quite a bit of coriander, probably not for someone that doesn't like coriander. Oh, definitely, definitely not, definitely not. But once you taste it, it's, it's, um, I'd encourage them to give it a go because it, it's, yeah, it's pretty unique. I find that a lot about virgin cuisine. It's, it's, it's got beautiful aromats. Yeah, great. Um, this is actually waiting now. But what I'll do is I'll just push this in anyway. So I do uh, 375 for every cup of rice that I've soaked. Um, and then I'm just going to allow an extra, so it's 750 for the rice. And I'll add a, an extra 50 grams just for those noodles. So right. I'll, take it, I'll just make sure I've got enough salt in here. Oh, yeah. I won't do that. <laughs> Please don't um, burn yourself. So yeah, we need 800 grams. It's been a while since I've had a good burn, so that's good. <laughs> uh, it's not today. No, not today. And then into here, so you'll see it pissing, but normally it's, it's really fierce. And then all we do is just give that a stir to so There it goes, that's what I mean, just be careful. We put a lid on it and we turn that down to as low as um, the other will go. Yeah, great. And so what's next? So next, um, what I'll do is I'll bring this one forward and I'll put that rice to the back and hope the it doesn't go out. Turn that one off. Okay. So next is, I can't remember what's next on this recipe. Uh, next, uh, Oh, that's right. So we've got to throw in some, um, a cup. Yeah. So we throw in a cup of tamarind. Yeah. And I just buy the tamarind paste uh, from, uh, I've got quite a good uh, Middle Eastern grocery store. Yeah. This, this tamarind paste. Great. And if you have if people who don't like tamarind, it's more related to Indian cuisine, but it's because of the old spice root and even fenugreek. I mean, fenugreek, and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure years ago I did a project that when I was studying and uh, fenugreek originates from Greece. Ah. Um, very um, curry-like in its flavour. The seeds are, are, are more flavoursome than the, the um, leaves, but... The Middle East, up in the Middle East, they use a lot of dried herbs, and these, um, and it sort of makes sense because they, they grow up in the summertime. So, what are you going to do over winter time? Go without? No way. So, you know, they, they dry them, and you can get a bit of flavour. So, we put in the um, tamarind paste here. And then we just add a, a half a cup of water just to loosen it. Oh, this is exciting for me because I'm slowly getting through these uh, prep trains. So <laughs> I don't have to think so hard and um, I can relax. Um, and then we just add our, our turmeric. Oh, I love turmeric and the properties of turmeric are fantastic. Just like... The properties of the salmon, you have, you know, your omega-3 and omega-6 um, in your salmon. 
the yeah. properties of uh, your film rack. So uh, you cover in all bases, I think, with this addition. So uh, turmeric, and we'll do this is just chili powder, so I'll dust this in. Then um, we'll bring that up to the boil. I'm just going to throw in uh, my dried fenugreek. And this is, this is um, oh, I buy it in, in like half kilo bags, eh? So. We do have a lot when we when we have this sauce on at any one time. But um, if you could be in this kitchen or if you could do some sort of smell app, um, the flavours are intense. It's fantastic. I can tell so you why. I really wish there was smell hey? kitchen doing these series. It would make my life yeah, a lot know. more enjoyable. Instead of just yeah, watching yeah. and wishing well, I, I could think smell. It would have teased you too much. Don't you think it would have teased you too much? Possibly. Um, could tease me a bit too much. Uh, yeah. Uh, it does turn a, a nice khaki cup. The only other spice we need to put in there is some. Um, uh, cinnamon, but we do that um, off the heat, and we just need to adjust the, the sourness with a little bit of sugar. Okay. So I've just got a little bit of cast of sugar. I don't know if anyone can hear, but that naughty old kitchen hand of mine <laughs> wants to go outside for some strange reason. Follows you around all day, and when you need her to be to behave. Miss Don't anyway. worry. I'm sure everyone has heard my dog barking, letting me know someone's walking by. Yeah. <laughs> They're well behaved, uh -huh. hey? So we're just, <laughs> when I want to be. Oh, the, flavor, the smell is unreal. And this is what's going to flavour our salmon. But um, And then the salmon can stand on its own and you can actually get to taste the salmon when you do a dish like this. So I'm just going to put a little bit more sugar in there. It says one to two. Uh, one to two um, tablespoons. Uh, basically, that, that's, that's our relish made. Perfect. So the only other thing we need to add is, is our um, cumin powder, but we just need to cool that down. So I've just got to cook that out for 10 minutes. So we'll turn that down to cook out. Our rice is coming along without losing too much steam. You can see the, the brown noodles in there, which gives it that nice nutty flavour. Um, our salmon is just starting to take shape. It's still just warm now, but you'll see here, uh, you'll just see the proteins just starting to coagulate just under the skin here. Um, and through here, it's starting to to set up really nicely. Still very wobbly through the, the thicker part, but um, we're happy with that. And I don't know what sort of time we've got going, but we started at two. Okay, so that's 35 minutes so far. Uh, so we'll move on and do our um, tahini yogurt. So we just got some tahini. It's an awfully big jar of tahini. For some reason, in this household, we we um, we buy in, we do buy in bulk, but we have little um, fetishes. So you know, one week it'll be tahini on everything, and next week it'll be garlic or something. Um, I need a, I need to get a bowl. Or something. Oh, okay. <coughs> I just want to wash and fold. Come on, Dishy, what are you doing? Just crying on the job, not washing up the dishes. Oh, she's a shocker. <laughs> I, I should introduce you to some more members of my family while we're here. I did We've got uh, three fish, and they're, they're actually fantastic. We've actually called this one, and, and believe it or not, before um, I did this, this is salmon. <laughs> this is ocean trout. <laughs> 
And this one's here a mustard, but I don't know if I can say that on your uh, <laughs> Can we talk about hair mask and fish? They, uh, they look like the best audience to cook in front of. But, Never oh, disagree with what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Even though my wife is behind the camera cringing. <laughs> um, so we're just placing some tahini in here, and I don't know what I've got. I've got two tablespoons on the recipe. Of course, um, as it sits, it does um, separate and goes all in and thick down the bottom. Uh, I'll just grab a whisk to do this part. So I've got a little bit of garlic here, which um, I've sort of semi-crushed. Uh, 10 minutes. Could you remind me when about five minutes is up? Sure. In English, if, if you remember. Uh, so we pop out a little bit of garlic in with the tahini. We give that a good mix. Um, and then we're just going to throw a little bit of yogurt in here. And we just do it a little bit at a time just to, so it, cause it does um, stiffen up as soon as you add a uh, and introduce another ingredient to it. So we have still got to add our lemon juice, which I've pre-squeezed. Have a cute jug. Yeah. I, I love um, op shops. <laughs> it might be different if I wasn't a chef. Maybe if I was a lawyer, I probably wouldn't like them as much. And <laughs> be able to them. <laughs> Buy what I want. But uh, this is what I've chosen, and I do enjoy it, so... Um, so this is our tahini yogurt, it's just to come together quite nicely. So it's garlicky, it's lemony, um, and yogurt, I guess, and tahini. Oh, good. Um, so that's how quick that, that can be. And a little bit of salt. So... If you want it a little bit thinner, you just use a bit of water because you're not going to adjust the flavour. Once you've got the flavour that you want, then if you just need it thinner, then just use a touch of water. It can take a little bit more lemon juice. And um, I put this with the dish, I, um, just because I love this with the rice. Right. And, and it, it works nicely with the salmon as well. Um, we, at Propeller, we have a function centre called Guild Hall, and we do um, a lot of salmon, or we also do a lot of your ocean trout there. And uh, the kitchen's probably about the same size as this kitchen, <laughs> believe it or not, and we do, you know, we're licensed to do 120 people. So in order to, to do it nicely, uh, this is the, the method that we use for uh, the um, salmon or the ocean trout, depending on what the person um, ordered. And we'll, we'll do it with uh, tahini yogurt and the walnut coriander topping. Great. Cool. So that's, that's ready to go for the next stage. Great. Well, we've got about two more minutes until I need to let you know that we're five minutes down. So how about we take this time to go into the pantry? Let us yep. see into your personal pantry, what type of person you are, what little secrets you have in there. Show us the oh. way. Okay, uh, so a small kitchen, the pantry is everywhere in this kitchen. Um, this, is my pride, this is my pride and joy. And it wow. All the time. Um, it's just herbs and spices. Uh, very OCD, but that's uh, me, and unfortunately I've given it to my daughter, or fortunately, one or the other. Um, yes. Very so organised. Anything in there. Um yeah, without, without it being too organised over the top. Then another part of the pantry is, is this bottom drawer. Um, I've got a couple of classics in here. Uh, this is a, a little uh, hazelnut spread coming out of Turkey, which is um, it's just delicious. It's ground hazelnuts and sugar, basically, but it's awesome on croissants and brioche, you know, any of those breakfasty type breads. And then 
um, a little bit of corned beef. And that's to remind me of my island brothers back home in New Zealand. So if I ever uh, get homesick. And then I've got another cupboard, which is a little bit sort of OCD as well. Yeah, um, you're organised. Is this what you uh, like in the um, commercial kitchen too? uh, Yes, it is actually. Yeah. I can't can't handle it. Um, Mess, you know, just makes stress as the saying goes. Yeah. What what would you say is the most exotic spice you have? You seem to have quite a few spices in that very organised spice drawer. Oh, what would you say is the most exotic? Um, oh, I don't, look, uh, besides the spice blends, um, I'm, I am using a lot of Turkish chilli at the moment, which oh. um, has got a, a nice... Uh, yeah, oh, here, let me smell. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the roasted Turkish chilli, which is, um, well, I just dust this almost everywhere at the moment, but it's, it's beautiful and, and uh, it's like tobacco. Right. Mm. Mm. There you go. The weirdest, the weirdest thing in my pantry is, is the out-of-date argan oil, and Lord knows what I'm going to do with it. But... Uh, the idea was to make tahini and argan oil, which is a spread that they use in Morocco, and serve it on toast. But um, haven't got I haven't around got around to doing it. So, and I brought it about three years ago. So now I'm scared to open it. <laughs> but it, it looks the part. Very good. Well, I reckon we should all go and try to find a recipe for Turkish chili and give that a go. It looked very different. Yeah. yeah. Um, How's our sauce okay. going? Sorry? How's it all going? Oh, yeah, it's coming along nicely. So this is where the stage where we need to, to look at the um, salmon that I just want to quickly touch on. Uh, so you can see this is nice and firm. And under the uh, just a, a small um, press, you'll feel it give, and that's what you're looking for. Obviously, this is still loose up here, so it's not quite ready. Right. If your oven's too hot, you will get this protein coagulate um, up here, uh, which is what you want to avoid. So just a nice slow oven. So once you see it changing from this colour to this lovely paler orange, yeah. that's, um, you're, on, you're actually on the money. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So we're probably only about um, 10 minutes away on that one. But I've got this one. Yeah, we can probably... Uh... Dish it up and show it, and everyone can see um, on the recipe um, how long to cook it for. Unfortunately, yeah. we do not have all the time in the world to cook as long as we can. We do have to use the magic of television sometimes. So, so this is um, one that you can prepare beforehand, and, and then it, you don't have to serve it warm. So I just put right. this over. Just be, be um, confident. And then I'll just peel back the skin. Oh. I normally just peel back the skin. <laughs> there we go. Um, I normally don't um, scale it, but the boys have scaled it for me. There we go. That is, that is a thing that people are always on the fence for. You're either a scale person or you're a no-scale person. Why, why yes. do you choose to keep scales on? Uh, just as you saw, it's so it's easy to um, peel back the skin. And then I just take this, um, it just helps the skin hold so right. you can peel it off. I take out this bloodline. Like so. There's nothing wrong with this bloodline. You can. You, you can eat it. I don't know. I've always just taken it up for some reason. But if I'm serving a whole salmon as such, I don't. And then I very carefully place it back on the tray to present it. That's beautiful. Um, and then I've, I've folded some tea towels because this it does bleed a little bit of liquid now. And I'm not to handy towel. I'll just pop this under just while I'm dressing it. Uh, 
and we get rid of this. Then we'll just come over here and we'll just finish this subsea a little bit, just with a little bit of it's uh, about one and a half, two teaspoons of um, cinnamon. It's ready to go. Perfect. Oh, it's sour, it's spicy, could have a bit more heat, but um, we're not going to. And then we'll just check this rice. This is also ready. Amazing. It's all come together just perfectly then. Yeah. So I sometimes squeeze a little bit of uh, lemon juice into this rice, but I won't for today because I've got all that lovely sour tamarind. So you can see the rice is quite long. Yeah. Put it on the, much longer. The, so there's a the noodle, and there's your lovely long rice. Yeah, beautiful. A little bit more salt in there. And then to put it together, uh, we're just going to... Thin this tahini yogurt out just a fraction more because it's just a bit too thick. And we're just going to um, basically present it on this plate. Yeah, great. A nice uh, so, middle of the table type dish. Yeah. So we'll have a big pile of uh, rice. Uh, a couple of extra bowls of tahini yogurt and this beautiful um, Persian relish. Oh, I can hear your dog. Yeah, there's obviously someone out there at the moment. I definitely don't need a doorbell, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, and then I'll just put the rest of this into a little dish. I'd throw a couple of lemons. I'd even squeeze one over this beautiful salmon and just throw the yeah, beautiful. lemon on it. Serve the radish alongside it. And then turn out the fries and serve that alongside it. Yeah, delicious. If you wanted um, to add even just some chopped cucumber and tomatoes, it would be perfect for this dish. Yeah, delicious. This is such a really fresh, um, fresh dish, but I feel like it's it's utilising quite a few ingredients that you can get um, at some colder times of the year for us in Australia. So it's a very versatile um, dish throughout the year um, and I think delicious for uh, for a weeknight with the family or as a main dish uh, to impress some guests so uh, absolutely yeah. beautiful thank you so much for showing us this recipe Kurt um, and we'll be putting it up on our website if anyone is uh, wanting to try it themselves uh, and if you're in Perth go and visit Propeller and go visit um, Perth Seafoods and support these local businesses Thanks so much, Kurt. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. Bye.